And then when it got too much for me to handle by myself, I spoke out, I sought help, I started to, to understand mental health a bit more. When I'm focused on something else that's so engaging, I don't really have enough space for hallucinations, voices, whatever. Much more stressful life nowadays, and we do need to check that a little bit and make sure that, you know, your job isn't the be all and end all. Even by extension, I would say your family isn't the be all and end all. You need to take care of yourself. Think about a physical illness, something like cancer, for example. When there was a lot more cancer awareness, which was great, a lot more people started thinking they have cancer. True. You know, once I asked for help about my mental health, I realized that it's, life is so much easier when you ask for help. And you have all these people around you who are there ready to help you because they love you. And not asking for it seems a bit counterproductive. Jiena kliera ġusordwej, naħdem fuq il-televizjoni u għanka fil-media soċjali. Passjoni kbir għal-fitness u dak kollu li jistajjena biex inħossuna tajbin mentalment u fizikament. Dak kollu li nitallem, nirriċerka u nistaqsi, serin kunet nidiskuti ma professjonisti u nizbe esperienzi li serjatuna għodda li nistaw nużaw biex nejxu ħajjitna blaħjar mot possibli. Nil-għagwa l-podcast iħor issa... Għamina diversi episodi, et neqpaw nirċivu, dwar xtixti u iktar li niddiskutu, kollox rila tat massaħa fl-ħar min l-ħar, li ma l-izbaħħġa ta' dawn il-podcast sija li jisek inti tirrelata ma' dak, forsi iktar min l-iħor, u et nidu pieċi ħafna bis-suġerimenti u blidi għat li etti batunna, iqpaw, iqpaw batunna fuq il-paġni soċjali ta'na, u dejjem inħedġu kom biex jekk, Episodju partikolari taħseb il-ħajjejn li l-ċaħat il-ħad bib familja u saqasmuħ. Nini graċaħkom bil-uddim ta' dana nsi jitlu kol fil-social pages, YouTube, Spotify, għamlu subscribe għalli intom tkunu taħfu metan għamlu podcast iħor. Il-lum suġġett interessanti ħafna u għal-qalbi ħafna għanka l-istudijajt u għal-ftiet snin u kol. U ma' nanna l-Metju Paris. Metju Paris għandu bachelor's degree fil-psikologija u jaħdem ma' NGO ewlenija. Metju jirrakonta dak li jiex fil-battalji min ħabba l-esperienza tijaw ma' psychosis bit-tama li joħloq aktar għarfin u jien biex li stigma fuq dan il-suġġet t-komplito noħs. Metju beda blog interessanti minn, so għat jiddu pjeċir ta' rawħu zgur, tews-sense.com, għan kunu għat naqsmu kol din il-link, jirrakonta ġrajiet min ħajtu u dak li jaddi minnu ta' kuljum. Metju, la nis graċafna tali oġbo k'tiġi. Thank you, thank you for inviting me. Il-blog vera oġobni, għara, meta rekordjan, ovvjament il-rekordjati, sa kemi rekordjajna dan il-program, kont rrixt, inti rrixt li tartikli, imma laħar wahda jja poezija. Iva. Oh my god, kemi sabiħa. Thank you. Poezija, tirrakkonta, inti ktib ta' dik il-poezija? Yes. Oh my god, vera tajba. Tirrakkonta li xinti, għandik, inti wahd il-xol tijak, wasal għali xinti għandek psychosis ma tiddeq xit kellem fuqa tiddeq kellem fuqa kullim kien għan jibdew mil-bidu ftit għan jitzlu fuqa ta' xina li għibar ħħġa li taffaxinani fiq jja li jinti għandek il-batta li tijak fil-ħajja u sipt xol li li jahdem biex jifejjaq dawn il-battalji imm inti stesta mill għallu rajjina nixti nitħol f'dak il-rigward ma għanibdew mil-bidu kieku kellek tiftakar din il-kondizjoni għandek inti mindejjem kienet te No, so I started experiencing symptoms when I was 15 around the time of our levels between the ages of 15 and 17 I dealt with it by myself, I hadn't told anyone. A couple of friends of mine knew sort of what I was experiencing, but nobody, you know, who could really help at, the, at that time. Um, and then when it got too much for me to handle by myself, um, I spoke out, I sought help, I started underst- to, to understand mental health a bit more. And from that day till today, sort of I've built a lot and worked a lot on certain things to be able to live the life that I live with my psychosis. And you you're always raising awareness against the stigma and working and then you went to study psychology yeah how did that come about <laughs> that's um, really hard <laughs> so i went from i think 
when I when I was 15, when I started experiencing symptoms, I must have wanted either to go into uh, probably architecture. It was at that time. I wanted to become an architect. And then I went to sixth form, and I wanted to do engineering, and I had maths and physics, and that wasn't working. So I switched completely and didn't know what I was going to do. Um, and then once I started, once I spoke out about my mental health and started understanding it a bit more, psychology seemed to make a lot more sense for me. I've always been somebody who understands other people. I'm good at listening, I'm good at talking, I'm empathic. So it's something that sort of piqued my interest at the time. And the more I learned about it, the more it seemed to be the right thing for me. I'd okay, but as you mentioned in your blogs, one of the articles you spoke about the voices you listen to mm-hmm. and it's harder in the morning yeah. now you have to, you had to study and even your job is quite intense so you have to be all there how do you balance that out <laughs> <laughs> with a lot of a lot of mental strength mostly um so yes the morning is is the hardest the morning whether it's a good or a bad day you know if it's a bad day it's much worse but if it's even if it's a good day I'll have that half hour in the morning where my hallucinations are a bit more intense. You know, everyone's not great or not really themselves in the morning before they get going. And mine is just a little bit more difficult. So you can imagine my, you know, 8 a.m. lectures, my meetings at 8 a.m. can be a little bit difficult for me. So I've very recently started to arrange my sleep pattern a bit more, which is good because even getting to sleep can be quite difficult. When I was younger, it was very much stay up very late and then sleep in as much as I could. Obviously, I didn't have a job at the time, so I, 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 when I could, I would. Um, but the mental strength, I think, is the most. So there's a portion of my energy every day that I need to use to control my symptoms, whether it's uh, visual, whether they're auditory, which are the two most common. Um, and no matter how many I have, how intense it is on that particular day, a part of my energy has to be used for that. So if I start, you know, doing too much or having too much on my plate and I start taking mm-hmm. from that reserve, I'm going to get a bit more unwell. Are there things you do like, for example, maybe sports, maybe to build your resilience? <laughs> you have uh, things... Sports, in all honesty, sports is the one thing I, just I think ma- that I, just, I haven't managed to... I just uh, mentioned sports as yes, it yes, came no, to mind. Um, there are a few things. Meditation, so Music maybe. is a very big ah, one for me. Meditation, when I was younger, I used to do it a lot more. Now I'm getting back into it. Um, music for me has always been a very big support. And even, I'm a very, I don't know how it sounds, but I'm a very creative, a very imaginative person. So um, watching TV shows, watching films, you know, getting lost in, in these things, even video games are stuff that I really like and use to give me a bit of relief from my, you know, my symptoms. Because when I'm focused on something else that's so engaging, I don't really have enough space for hallucinations, voices, whatever. Um, I think the things that that's built my resilience the most, though, um, are probably the people around me. I I really think that um, you know without those people that I have that have always been important or are important now to me, um, there are parts of resilience that mm-hmm. I wouldn't have been able to build. Um, I do owe a lot to myself as well, and I acknowledge that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, m- me, the same as you, the same as everyone, is not in this alone. And I think the support I had from the people was really important in, you know, building that resilience. Exactly. Asking you as a professional now, mm-hmm. psychosis, schizophrenia, a mental health condition, happens because you've been through something in your life. Some might be genetic. But how does it happen? So it can happen in lots of different ways. So some can be genetic, some can okay. be hereditary, which, um, you know, might be in my case that my, you know, my children have a, a higher chance of having schizophrenia mm-hmm. than other children. But that's more or less how it works. Even if it is genetic, you never really know until it's there. But if it's there, you know, you know about it. it. Mm-hmm. Um, even things like depression, alcoholism, substance use disorders can all be... Um, genetic, even anxiety. A lot of the time, triggers will be either stress-related, unfortunately, in psychosis as well, and um, they can also be drug-related. So, and it can, you know, be like you said, where you go through something, it can be trauma-related, and you'd have 
an experience which is so overwhelming and so intense that it leaves a lasting effect on you, whatever the effect is. That's why we're uh, reading more about mental health challenges nowadays because we're living more of a stressful life or maybe traumas which were untreated now. I think it's <laughs> both plus a lot, more. a lot more. So I think there's a lot more awareness, which is good. So where before a few fewer people used to speak out because of stigma or because of pride or whatever, that seems to be diminishing because there is more awareness and we do see more uh, books, shows, articles mm-hmm. about mental health, which is a good thing. On the flip side, yes, you are right. I think we are living a much more stressful life nowadays and we do need to check that a little bit and make sure that, you know, your job isn't the be all and end all. Even by extension, I would say your family isn't the be all and end all. You need to take care of yourself Mm -hmm. and do that the best way for you. There's nobody's way that is better. (laughs) Mm -hmm. We all have our own individual personal way of dealing what we have to deal with. Now, as long as it's good, I think that we do need to focus on maybe reducing that stress a little bit Mm -hmm. and living a bit more of a slow-paced life, not a fast-paced one. Exactly. The minute you decided to talk about it, how was the response? The first time I ever (laughs) spoke about it publicly, I was quite nervous about it. I think it was even the second time, but the first time I I was the most nervous. I didn't know how I, w- how I would be received. The, the first time I was, um, I spoke to the Motor Psychiatrist Association, so it was a lot of people who I knew would understand, you know? And then the, the time after that, I spoke on Sharabank, and that was, <laughs> you know, very daunting. I hadn't spoken about it yet. Uh, my Maltese was not as good as it is <laughs> nowadays, so it was quite overwhelming. And I do remember hearing mostly a very positive response, but... You're always going to hear comments here and there, see things here and there that are, you know, not going to be in line with what you said or what you think. Mm -hmm. And that was fine for me. It was something I was prepared for before going into it, I think. Dan il podcast ma kienx ikun possibli minajr. Low GI. Hobbs Low GI. L'aktar hobza bnina fi gzeritna. Isiba bis fil huinet tal Maypole. Team Sport, il-post fejn isip laqwa brand sportivi bħal di adora u Under Armour u laqwa ditti ta' zraben su koni u hoka f-fos toħrajn, isibuom liklin u birkirkara. Hi Pro, prodotti mammolin bi-proteina biz-zejjed biex t-komplementa d-dita ti akta koljum u li serje jnuk fi-training li tamil biex t-iex ħajja aktar b-saħita. Gulon, gallettini bla cokkor b-toma bnina. Natru. Halib plant-based b'ingredienti naturali biss min ajr tsokkor mizjud. Fjur di vita, għal varjeta gbira ta' ġobnijiet. There is a lot of awareness and all of it is really good. But does it happen sometimes that people might just be a little bit anxious or just have panic attacks in everyday life and they mistake that for being sick and depressed because of all this awareness? So can it work both ways? I think, I mean, yes, it, yes, it can. And I'm not saying that it can't. I think it's the way that it's done that has to be correctly. When we speak about awareness, we should always speak about education as well. You can't have one without the other. Okay. I can't, that, I can't be aware of something and know something if I don't know about it. So if I know what anxiety is, but I don't know what the symptoms of anxiety are, or I don't understand how anxiety works, I'm going to find it much harder to identify that in myself. Mm-hmm. Think about um, a physical illness, something like cancer, for example. When there was a lot more cancer awareness, which was great, a lot more people start thinking they have cancer. True. You know, I feel something here, I feel something here, I read something online. Mm -hmm. How we combat that is a little bit easier. When you go to the doctor, you check, he says yes or no, and you're fine. With mental health, you need to be a bit more difficult, uh, a bit more, sorry, a bit more uh, careful, because it can be a little bit more difficult to identify and even to deal with and to confirm or deny sometimes. So 
what I would recommend is if you ever feel any sort of mental health symptoms that you don't know what they are, speak to a professional okay. about it. Mm -hmm. That would be the first step. And I think more than that, learn, sort of read things that are good, listen to things that are good related to mental health so you can see you know, how you feel or how the people around you feel and what to look out for. Would you suggest people to find coping skills before? So if I'm feeling a little bit anxious, um, when you speak to people who come to seek help, um, do you suggest fitness, meditation, good sleep, for example? Do you suggest that before? Of course, definitely. Seeking? The, in fact, the, the role I work in at the moment is uh, we give talks and trainings, you know, workshops about about mental health. Um, and a lot of the ones we do sort of either mention or are literally about stress management, um, sleep, emotions, how to be, you know, how to communicate, things that we might see as a little bit basic, but that's how you get here, by having the foundation, you know, which is stronger. If it's strong enough for you to build on, then you can build whatever you want. Mm -hmm. If you know, I'm working at a level where I have a lot of stress, I'm not sleeping well, I don't have time for exercise, my diet's not good, I don't take care of my body, I don't take care of my mind because I have no time for things that I like, my emotions are all over the place. It might seem normal, it might seem like you're doing okay, but realistically, you might not be. And those things that come under underneath are more important than com what comes on top, which is how much money you're making, how many tasks you're getting done at work, how many times you're going out on the weekend and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. we, we're, we're hearing a lot uh, this phrase, how to love ourselves, we need to love ourselves more. When we're battling with a mental illness or with a mental anxiety, whatever, uh, how can we start to love ourselves again? Um, You've been through this, first of all. I have, and I have quite recently, to be honest. Okay. Um, so when I, before I started the blog, I had a couple of months where I wasn't doing too well. Um, and the main sort of feeling around it was more of a depressive feeling. I've suffered with anxiety as well. I obviously have my schizophrenia, which is, um, you know, my main, my main diagnosis, I suppose. But depressive symptoms are always the ones I found more difficult to deal with. I feel like anxiety and psychosis are things that I understand a lot more now. But depression can be quite difficult, and I feel like it can be quite difficult because of what we're talking about, because of this difficult challenge of starting to love yourself again. And we all do love ourselves on some level, but there needs to be that acknowledgement that, yes, I do, I do love myself, and that understanding that um, I love myself how the way I am. And that's not something which I feel like I've achieved. So mm -hmm. I'm not an example of that. But I found that, you know, not, first of all, not caring or to, an, to a certain extent, not um, really thinking too much about what other people think about you. That's a first step. <laughs> That's right? a first step. It's, it's for everyone. Ev everyone suffers from it. Everyone suffers from it. E the funniest thing is that, and something which did make me realize it, is that if I'm in a room full of people and I'm concerned what they think about me, if there are 10 people in the room, everyone is concerned about what 10 people think about them. There's not one person in that room who's not concerned about the others. So if we're all concerned about each other, why don't we just not be concerned at all? <laughs> but you get that, I think, with age, by experience, and by working on yourself, exactly. for sure. That's it. Mm -hmm. And it, it all comes down to the fact that I need to be okay with myself. It's great to have goals, and it's great to want to be something for a specific reason. But sometimes I just need to understand that, listen, at this point, I'm enough for me, and Yes, that's fine. In fact, I was reading this and it was very interesting. I would like to share with you. I hope I explain it well. It was saying this particular book, it was saying that um, life can be hard, but we make it a lot harder in our minds. Sometimes we're afraid of things happening before they even happen and they even might not happen or because of we think that you're thinking that about me. But can we train ourselves into not doing that? It's quite hard. It is hard. <laughs> it is hard. Um, 
I, as a person, I think my temperament has always been a pretty carefree one. As anxious as I do get, I've always been quite carefree. I put down that. I put that down to my, you know, upbringing. I was, I didn't have too many. I did have a lot of rules, but they weren't too strict, and I was able to sort of explore and be curious by myself. So, um, I've always been pretty carefree. I think something that really helped with that was my work with my psychologist um, using CBT. So making me think a lot more realistically about situations. What, what does it mean? Cognitive behavioral therapy. Okay, okay. Um, so the idea is that, you know, if you have a situation, you can look at it from one side or you can look at it from a more realistic side. And if I have a situation which is anxiety provoking, and like you're saying, from, I prepare from before how I'm going to deal with the situation or how I'm going to look at the situation, it might not work totally, but it will help a little bit. Keeping that realistic idea of what the situation is like in mind, being a bit more objective sometimes and less in your head, makes you see that the situation might not be as bad as you feel like exactly. it is. Because sometimes we make situations worse. We always have these voices again mm-hmm. saying, "Is my you're doing it right. Look what they're saying. They're judging you. You're, yeah. You know? And sometimes we're depleted out of Literally. thinking all these which are not happening at all definitely it could be a simple miscommunication between mm-hmm. two people i assume that somebody is mad at me <laughs> and before they've even opened their, their mm-hmm. mouth the look on my face says that i'm mad at them and then we've started an argument a conflict for absolutely no reason mm-hmm. so that comes that in that situation might come down to communication for example which is something basic that we do need to maybe relearn sometimes and understand how to be more empathic and understanding when we communicate exactly you know so taking care of ourselves in all aspects is where we have to start and i feel like stress is a really really big one that a lot of people are suffering with exactly and feeling good about ourselves that makes a lot of difference i would like to raise also a bit of awareness of People are seeking help, mm-hmm. but I still feel the need to mention the fact that men maybe are less likely to seek help. Yes. Can we talk about it? Why is it? Um, I think the, the, the main sort of feeling around it is pride. I think it, and it's not pride in, in, a, in, in a negative sense at all. It's just something which maybe society has has built this armor around men which they have to wear and they can't take off and if i do seek help and if i do ask for help and not just with mental health with a lot of other things you know it's seen i'm seen as either not good enough or i don't know what i'm doing or not strong enough in the case of mental health um and when you really think about it and i've thought about this a lot and i've i've spoken about this a lot um, it, it's a really fragile, but at the same time, it looks so solid facade that if once you break it, it's broken and it will stay broken. And, you know, once I s- asked for help about my mental health, I realized that it's life is so much easier when you ask for help, wow. you know, and you have all these people around you who are there ready to help you because they love you and not asking for it seems a bit counterproductive okay but what would we say to someone who not has no friends maybe but um it's really hard for him to trust maybe or has no good relationship with his parents maybe that might be hard definitely it could very well be and i know there are a lot of people out there whose situation is not as lucky as mine was and they don't have the emotional, practical, you know, financial support that, that I've had my entire life, mm-hmm. which is something I feel very blessed for. But there are always going to be people there to help. I'm one of them. My colleagues are others. There are a lot of people here professionally, personally, voluntarily who are there to help and who would like to, you know, put a smile on somebody's face, even if it's just for fun. <laughs> So Mm -hmm. a good place to start if, you know, somebody is feeling like this and they have no one to speak to, a good place to start is always a doctor. Um, And I always say this, GPs are very accessible. GPs are somebody that in Malta, especially 
a lot of people um, look up to and a lot of people listen to. So I think it's always a very good place to start. A lot of people trust their doctor as well. Mm -hmm. So if there is anyone who, who, who is feeling like this, I say that would be the best place to start if you really can't speak to anybody. I'm really glad you mentioned it. And the last point I would like to ask about um, here we're always speaking about well-being, about eating good food, about doing fitness to feel better and try to find natural coping mechanisms. But at mm -hmm. the end of the day, if you're suffering from some particular condition, being it physical or mental, you have to take medication. Yeah. And there's a stigma against that as well. There is. And what would you tell us about that? Um, I'd say the stigma against medication... Um, I, is, is one thing that I, I, I fail to understand nowadays. The stigma against mental health, I can understand more because it's for people, it's when people are different than you and you don't really understand them, so you stereotype them or stigmatize them in a certain way. Okay. Medication is something we've all used. It's something we all take, maybe not for you know our whole lives, but it's something that we've all made use of. If I have a headache, I'm going to take a Panadol. Exactly. Um, when it comes to mental health, it's no different. I need my medication. I have a very rocky relationship with medication. Um, I've stopped it by myself. I've started it again by myself, uh, which is obviously something you should not do. Mm -hmm. um, but throughout all that, I still understand that when I'm on my medication, when I take my medication, I am better. I feel better. And it's something I have to do. It's something that... You know, the same way that if I break my leg, I need to walk with crutches. I'm not going to say, no, I don't I need crutches. I'm going to try to walk by myself. Mm -hmm. Even if I did and I managed, great. But I'd be much more comfortable walking on crutches, you know? It's true. That's so what it's like. you have to take your medication to get yeah. better. It's you says fighting it. It doesn't work that way. No, fighting it mm -hmm. never works. If you don't want to be on medication and that is totally your right and nobody can take that away from you, I think you need to be that little bit extra careful then in the rest of your life. If I don't take my medication, I need to make sure that I'm taking care of myself, that I'm doing exercise, I'm sleeping well, eating well, not exposed to too much stress, I'm being sociable, I'm working, you know. I need to make sure that a lot of other things are in place because if I don't take my medication, then my chemicals are going to be imbalanced. And if my chemicals are imbalanced, there's more of a chance that I'm going to, um, you know, have some sort of breakdown which could be either a panic attack, it could be a severe psychotic episode. Mm -hmm. So if I just take my medication, it can make the rest of my life a little bit easier. It means that I can afford to be a little bit more stressed out for one week at work if we have something going on. Or it means that I can afford to have something bad happen to me and you know, not end up at the bottom of, of the barrel again Fantastic. and be able to start relatively high up the ladder mm -hmm. that have climbed in fact you explain it really well in your blog yeah. so we'll mention the blog again it's really good we'll uh, put it in our link as well so that you can go and read the articles Matthew that was fantastic thank you very hot pechir kamina hello naiktar arfin u liktar li shtaqs nahroq u Matthew u harij u vera chara iya bish yekkan dek zonlain una tmuru siba u minti shwahdek كل هات يادي من شتي بتا منتي في شي زمن يو ايهور يو شات من الفاميليا يو وينتي ستيس One in four people will be affected by mental illness exactly. throughout so, their life that's... so if you're in a room with five people <laughs> one of you is going to or has or is experiencing a mental health problem exactly. Alec, Jivri, yek kinti għaddej min zmin, yek taf lil xaħat fil-familja tijak li għaddej min zmin, inkorraġġiħ biex jisip lajnuna u għalik jinda l-program. Vera ħat peċir, graċa għafna metju min għalbi. Aħna għasanna fitmin, pero jina nerġan heġġiċkom jek taħzbu li jem xaħat li ħajga u dimin dan l-podcast jek tista waqsmu u dej jem najdilkom l-istess messaġ tħlu fil-social media pages taħna u Spotify, YouTube, għabil podcast jad kollim kien, jivri tista utisim għu dan l-podcast u għanka taħablu. Graċa għafna Tali segwejtu nantaw podcast ihor. Muzika